Are you a dentist or a doctor or maybe you're more of a sporty type and embrace the career as a personal trainer or perhaps you've chosen something a little more unconventional and decided to become a tattoo artist for example. Whatever path you've chosen, if you're a public facing professional with your own customer base, you will be considered by Google as an individual practitioner. And if you rely on Google My Business to attract more clients, you're in for a treat. Because today, I'm going to show you one awesome tip you can use to expand your reach on Google Maps and get more leads. So hang in there. Hey, it's Luke Duran here from rankingacademy.co.uk, where I help local business owners like you maximize their online visibility to attract more customers. If it's your first time here today, why don't you subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. As mentioned in the introduction of this video, according to Google's guidelines, you will be considered as an individual practitioner if you're a public facing professional and typically with your own customer base. Here are a few examples. Doctors, dentists, dental hygienists, registered nurses, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, lawyers, financial planners, psychologists, physiotherapists, hairstylists, music instructors, massage therapists, tattoo artists, personal trainers, Cheaters. If you didn't hear your professional occupation being mentioned, don't worry. Here is what you need to remember. As long as you operate in a public facing role and you can be contacted directly at the verified Google My Business listing location where you are based during stated hours, which would imply that ideally you'd need a dedicated phone number, you can create your very own Google My Business listing. If this is still unclear, here is an example for a law firm based in Troy, Michigan called Baron Rosenberg Mayoros and Mayoros. They have created a listing for their own law practice and one of the associates who works there created his very own personal listing too. You can probably guess what advantages this may represent for a business like this law firm. Surely two Google My Business listings must be better than one. Mm, not so fast. Before you rush to your computer and start creating your personal listing, here is what you need to know. When it comes to practitioners listings, there are two possible scenarios. The first one is multiple practitioners at one location. And if this is your case, this is what Google says. The organization should create a business profile for this location separate from that of the practitioner. The title of the business profile for the practitioner should include only the name of the practitioner and shouldn't include the name of the organization. Here is an example for this plastic surgery clinic located in Miami called the Seduction Cosmetic Center, which obviously has its very own Google My Business listing. But most of the surgeons who work there seem to have created their own Google My Business listing too, using their name without including the name of the surgery as part of it, adhering to the Google's guidelines. Let's now look at the second practitioner scenario, the solo practitioner, for which Google says, if a practitioner is the only public facing practitioner at a location and represents a branded organization it's best for the practitioner to share a business profile with the organization and create a single business profile using the following format. Name of the business followed by the name of the practitioner. Did you think that was confusing? So did I when I first read it. So let me illustrate with an example. Here is a lady called Christina Franzoni who is a life coach in London and runs her own business called LifeStrategyCoaching.com. As per the Google My Business's guidelines, she created a single listing which combines the name of her business first, followed by her own name. Hopefully you now understand the concept of what practitioners listings are, the differences between them and how to set one up correctly, whether you are a solo practitioner or part of a multi-practitioners organization. But the question is, how do you use this information to boost your visibility on Google Maps? If you run a practice in which multiple practitioners operate, you might think that creating a listing for each and every one of them is the way forward, especially after what I've said, but you would be wrong. By creating a separate listing for each practitioner, there is a risk these will be competing with the main practices listing and against each other. Google applies a set of filters to local results, meaning only a limited number of listings sharing the same website, for example, can be displayed in Google local results. Looking back at our plastic surgeon example, if the main listing, which has over 700 reviews and a decent rating, was filtered out in favor of this one, which only has 
five reviews and a four star rating, I believe it would have drastic consequences to the business overall. But here is the tip. There are instances when creating practitioners listings can be a real opportunity to generate more visibility. This applies to businesses for which multiple Google My Business categories can be relevant. Let me explain. If I go on Google Maps and check this tattoo and body piercing shop called Nemesis located in Camden Town, London, I can see they've chosen tattoo shop as a primary category which is highlighted by star. Body piercing shop and tattoo removal service have been selected as secondary categories which seems totally fitting for this business. Because the primary category of a listing is a major ranking factor, this shop is likely to rank higher for tattoo shop related keywords than for body piercing or tattoo removal keywords. But if I look at the website, it seems each practitioner has its own distinct specialty, either piercing, tattooing or tattoo removal. This is when creating practitioners listings becomes powerful. Andy could claim a listing for tattoo removal, Zoltan and Magda for body piercing, and Attila, Tommy, Rebecca and Miller for tattoo artists. The trick here would be to choose the right primary category for each practitioner and to make sure they don't overlap with one another. Since there are four tattoo artists and two body piercers, you wouldn't want to create a listing for each and every one of them as they would conflict. To avoid this, you'd need to make a judgment call and only create a listing for one of the tattoo artists, let's say Attila, and one body piercer, like Zoltan for example. This strategy will multiply the chances for this business to rank higher for many more relevant terms and drive more business overall with a different listing. If you're not sure which category you should choose, head over to plepper.com. From the main menu, click on Google My Business Categories List 2021. Scroll down until you get to a search box and search for what you feel is the most relevant category for your activity. Let's stick with the tattoo shop example. Straight away I can see there is a category that is an exact match for this business called tattoo and piercing shop. I can also see there is a category for tattoo removal service which would be the perfect choice for Andy who is the only one doing that. The tattoo artists category would clearly be a great fit for Attila while Zoltan could use the category body piercing shop. Each listing would link to the corresponding practitioner's page on the site giving it more weight. You can see how effective this strategy could be. By setting up multiple practitioners listings with specific primary categories that don't compete with one another or the main listing, there would be a much greater chance for this business to rank higher for many more keywords with the different listings. There are, however, a few caveats you need to take into consideration. As I've already mentioned, it's very important to ensure the categories of each listing do not conflict with one another, which means you wouldn't want to create listings for all practitioners sharing the same specialty. I would suggest you make a decision based on how long a practitioner is likely to continue working within your business as you wouldn't want to start creating a listing for someone who might leave your organization in a few months. Which leads me to the next point. If you are the owner of the Messi statue, you would want to claim ownership of all practitioners listings. Why? This is because if a practitioner owns his listing and decides to leave to work elsewhere, it could confuse Google later on and become an issue in search results. If you own the practitioners listing and that practitioner leaves the practice, you can simply delete it. You will need to build relevance for each listing separately, just like any other Google My Business listing and get reviews and photos and everything else. Despite this caveat and depending on your business vertical, I think this strategy is definitely something to be considered if you want your business to become more visible for your targeted keywords. I've chosen a tattoo shop as an example here, but this tactic would work well for many other industries such as uh, lawyers or dentists who can choose between many different categories. To see what the options are, go back to Plepper and search for your primary category, then click on it. It will show you some of the many more options available based on relevance. If any of them apply to your business, you might want to consider creating additional listings. Clearly, this strategy won't work if you are a solo practitioner. Remember Google's guidelines. If you're a solo practitioner, you should have one listing which combines your practice along with your name, like we saw with Christina Fanzoni, our life coach example. However, if you are a solo practitioner, it is not against Google's guidelines to create a listing for your practice as well as a listing for yourself as a practitioner. This means Christina could create a listing for a life strategy coaching business using life coach as a primary category. But she could also create another listing for herself using 
career guidance service, for example, as a primary category, which is something she seems to be offering anyway. Just like for multiple practitioners, there's a caveat. You would need to build authority for both listings, but it would give you the chance to rank for multiple categories and keywords. Here is an example of an orthodontist located in a small town of Sammamish in Washington, who is using this very strategy. If I search for orthodontist Sammamish, the map pack returns three results. One called orthodontics on the plateau, which links directly to the homepage of the orthodontics website. And one called Dr. Robert Trujillo, which links to the bio of the one and only orthodontist working at that very practice as he is the owner. You will notice he is using the same primary category for both listings, which I've said you shouldn't do as one of your listings might get filtered. In this case, however, it works since Samamesh is such a small town and has only three orthodontists. So Google is not really spoiled for choice. But I repeat myself again, do not use the same primary category for your listings. I thought I would share this example with you to demonstrate how effective this strategy can be and how this orthodontist is able to take the lion's share of Google local search results by using it. That's it for today, guys. If you are a practitioner of some sort, I'm sure I got you thinking. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, like it. If it was your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And until next time, happy marketing. Thank you.